everybody how's it going welcome to another video we've got a, another interview here with old bear's den of bigfoot out of west virginia i've got him on the line how's it going man it's going pretty good you were telling me a little bit of what y'all were doing this morning you're, you're staying busy up there old bear's den of bigfoot has got a youtube channel i'm going to link it below for everybody to go over and check his videos out and i'm really i love them i i've been watching uh when i can most of his videos and <clears throat> i i really enjoy the way he tells the stories and there are a lot of stories from your friends aren't they um yeah they're they're from other truck drivers that i know and uh a lot of truck drivers i don't know i get a lot of stories from here in west virginia too Oh, good deal. Now, these uh, just over-the-road drivers, or are they co-haulers? Or I mean, do you have a friendship? Y'all hauling something specific? Uh, no, no. Um, usually, uh, I, I get stories when I go out west, uh, down south and stuff. I haul. Uh, I used to haul uh, a couple of different things, uh, carbon and plastic, and now I haul strictly plastic. Oh, okay. I'm West Virginia. I'm thinking you're calling, you're hauling coal. That's, <laughs> I guess I stereotyped you. I'm sorry, but, uh, <laughs> you, you, you have a YouTube channel. Do you want to talk about that first? Just kind of tell us what your, you know, what your goals are and, and, and what you concentrate on, because I think we would have the same audience and people, People might like to come over and, and check out your channel. Why don't you tell us about your channel? Well, on my channel, um, I typically have stories of Bigfoot that are aggressive towards human, you know, mankind. And they seem to, and that's kind of my niche. I get aggressive stories all the time, you know, where Bigfoot might, you know, smack the house and destroy trees or stuff in the ha or around the home or be looking in on, on the people in the home and stuff like that. And I want to get that information out there because of when I was a kid, uh, I seen a big foot at age 16 and went from a chance meeting to an aggressive thing. And it, it, it just kind of spiraled from that point. And plus my wife, and my best friend, they help me with, uh, you know, the, the channel. They do things for me. My wife usually runs the camera, and my buddy has seen Bigfoot. He's dealt with them pretty much all his life, and uh, that's how we got started. Wow, that's, uh, that's interesting. Well, you said you've had an encounter, and that's kind of what these interviews are about. Do you want to just start at the beginning? And you told me before we started you've had – uh, I think you said five encounters through your life. You want to start at the beginning and yeah. just go from there? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, the first one, when I was uh, 16 years old, it was the last day of deer season here in West, in West Virginia. It was a pretty warm day. I mean, the temperatures were up in the 60s. Uh, usually our deer season is the high is 40, 42. And you're lucky if you get that by that time of the year because it's in December. And um, my dad let me go by myself. I was 16. I had a license. And uh, I went a mile out the ridge from where we parked. And, and it was in the afternoon. It was around 2 or between 2 and 2.30 when I got there. I sat there for probably half an hour. And um, I heard some deer running my way. And these three does ran out from behind uh, out of a holler. I was near the head of the holler. And at the head of the holler, there was two little splinter haulers that come meet up at the head of the holler. And uh, they came out, and as they came out, they were running. Uh, they stopped. They were breathing heavy. Uh, you could tell they'd been run quite a ways. And uh, finally, after about 30 seconds or so, they took off again. And I could hear something coming out of the small hauler uh, off to my left, and I could hear grunts, and I thought it was a buck coming out. You know, that time of year, that's their mating time. And, you know, I was fairly knowledgeable as a kid at that age, you know, about deer. Never had heard of a Bigfoot. I'd seen Boggy Creek the year before as a kid. And, uh, you know, my dad just kind of looked at me 
when we watched the movie, he watched it with me and my younger brother, and he looked at me and said, all them things, are, that's, that's fake, don't worry about it. And I never thought nothing about them. Well, and this, the noise kept getting closer and closer, and there was a big boulder there off to my left. It was about seven, seven and a half foot tall. And uh, this thing came, it stopped behind the boulder, and the noise, you know, the, the footfall stopped, and then it started again, and it came out behind the boulder and uh, was watching the way the deer went. And it kind of stood there for probably five, ten seconds and then turned and looked right at me and uh, kind of had a surprised look on its face. It looked more human in the face than it did, uh, than it would, you know, look like an ape or something. But it was hair covered from the top of its head down to its shoulders. There was no hair on its face. It just kind of looked at me surprised, and then it, kind of started baring its teeth and growling at me and took a step towards me. And when it took a step towards me, I, I'd already raised my rifle up thinking it was a deer going to step out. And I had a uh, Model 94 Winchester, and I just clicked the hammer back. And when I clicked the hammer back, it stopped growling. And it looked at me and kind of was looking for a way to get out. And it took off running. It spun around and took off running back up behind the bowl, and I never could see it. And the whole encounter probably lasted probably a couple minutes from the time it walked out till it disappeared. And I got up and went to leave and, uh, I got to the road to go back out to the truck where my dad was hunting out, uh, back out the ridge and it screamed, you know, it, it let out a big scream. And I kind of did my best impression of a, an Olympic, Olympic walker. Uh, to get back to the truck. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. I can just see you. I can see you doing the speed walk out of the woods. That's great. Well, I, it's kind of funny because I, I've, I've never been a little kid. I was never little. I was a big kid when mom, mom and dad brought me home from the hospital. Uh, they said I should have been able to walk when I was born <laughs> just by the size I was. Right. Well, uh, so that wasn't a necessarily a violent encounter. Did you tell anybody when you got home? How, how did it go? What was the aftermath like? Well, I ran into my dad uh, going back out the ridge, and uh, the, the moment he looked at me, he said, what's the matter? And I said, Dad, I don't want to talk about it. I said, Dad, I want to go home. And he said, all right. You know, he hadn't seen any deer, and he, he was like, that's fine. We'll go home. You know, you don't want to hunt. You know, we'll go home, son. That's no big deal. We got loaded up in the truck, and, you know, all the way out the ridge, he kind of looked at me, and I was kind of in shock, I guess, and, you know, had a strange look on my face, and my dad kept asking me, and, you know, he asked me probably six or seven times, and uh, finally I looked at him, and I had tears in my eyes, and I said, Dad, I, I, I really, I don't know how to explain this to you. He just kind of looked at me, and he said, son, you're my boy. Tell me, you know, just tell, just tell your old man what's what's wrong. What did somebody come out there and say something to you? Did somebody try to harm you? What went on? And I and I finally just blurted out, I saw a bigfoot, and he just kind of looked at me real strange, and he said, "Son, you mean them things we watched on a movie last year?" And I was like, "Yeah, Dad, but one of those." He's like, "Son, I told you those are not real," and I said, "Dad." They are real. I just saw one. Uh, I, I don't lie to you, Dad. He said, no, you've never lied to me. He said, you know the consequences if you lie. And I Dad, I don't lie to you because, you know, you're my dad. And he just kind of looked at me. He said, son, he said, all right, I believe you. You know, tell me what happened. And I told him the full story and told him everything that, you know, what went on. And he's like, well, don't tell your mom and your grandmother because if you do, they'll never let us go hunting again. Yeah, yep. And uh, I never told my mom or my grandmother, never said a word to them, uh, never talked to anybody else about it, just to my dad. Uh, you know, I got an older brother and a younger brother and never told them, uh, never said anything to my sister, uh, buddies at school, just just kind of kept it in and it kind of affected me to the point where kind of I withdrew from other people. They were, and it just, it just, it turned my life upside down. Yeah, I bet it did. And that's just from seeing one, from seeing him step out like he did. 
But that wasn't your, is, is that the, well, I mean, the first is usually the premier encounter. You know, most people only have one, but you've had others. And uh, how, yeah. did, how, how did that progress? Keep Everybody was going to want to know everything, so you might as well just go ahead and give it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was, was, you know, after I got out of high school and, you know, um, I kind of started digging into the subject of Bigfoot back then. And this was back in the uh, middle 80s, is when I, uh, 1984 is when I seen this. And from that point on, I kind of started digging into them, trying to find out what they were. You know, going through the process of making a lot of mistakes, you know, going out at night, looking for them, trying to listen for them, trying to make uh, wood knocks and stuff like that, and lousy Bigfoot calls. And so for probably, till the time I was probably 36, I, you know, I made a lot of mistakes as an investigator. I guess you could call it, you know, doing investigation. And finally, I started talking to people and getting their stories about Bigfoot, you know, from around here in the mountains of West Virginia. And then when I started driving truck, I would, you know, kind of try to slip Bigfoot into the conversation. Sometimes I'd get laughed at. Sometimes I'd get guys that would come up to me and tell me, yeah, I've seen one. And they would tell me their story, and I'd write them down, and I kept them over the years. And that's where a lot of the stories come from today is that I, that I that I put out already have came from notes that I've taken back then and long descriptive notes of what happened to the person and what went on. And, and that's where most of my first few stories came from and but i get them all the time now the second bigfoot that i saw i was in north carolina doing an interview with a lady that's on our disc that i have a discord channel and we talk about bigfoot and i bring stories that i get from on the road into that channel and we talk about them we discuss them and and that's where you know i kind of like let them hear the story and then kind of approve of the story and then put it on YouTube. All right, wait a minute. I'm sorry to stop you, and I know it's rude, mm -hmm. but tell me again what this channel is. I, I wasn't clear on what. Is it something other people? Discord, Go ahead. Uh, Discord is like a voice channel. Okay. You can create, you can, you can download the Discord app and create a channel. It's a voice channel. You can make up, uh, where people can post things on there, you know, or, you know, it's kind of like texting almost on somebody. You, and then you have channels that it, it's a, it's an extension of your channel that you can do voice chats and stuff like that. Okay. I've, I've got people on there from all over the U.S., the West, the Northwest, Northeast, South. Uh, I've even got a guy on there that's from Australia. That's a good source for that's a good source for stories, isn't it? Yeah, it helps. I mean, it you know, and and it helps quite a bit. And you know, most of these people know quite a bit about Bigfoot or the Yowie, and 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 we talk about it and we discuss you know the story on that channel. And it's it's a lot of fun. We have we have we have a ball on Saturday nights on that channel and. Uh, anybody can come in and, and sit in and listen and ask questions. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to sidetrack you there, but I'm, I may start jumping in on Saturday. What time do y'all do it on Saturday? It's usually nine o'clock Eastern, nine o'clock Eastern. I, I'm going to write that down and try to try to uh, start an account and see if I can jump in with y'all, but uh, I'm sorry I sidetracked you. So you were coming up on your second encounter. Yeah. Anyway, I was in North Carolina doing an interview with one of the ladies that's on my Discord channel. And this was on Friday night, and we'd done the interview on Saturday night because it was a live interview, and I'd done it live on YouTube. We were sitting there on Friday night, and she's very afraid of being outside at night because Bigfoot, uh, she has a clan of Bigfoot that are kind of like living around her home, and she's not out in the middle of nowhere. There's other houses close to her. They're not on top of her, but there's a lot of, you know, there's houses around her. 
And we were, I got up and went to go walk over to my truck, just happened to catch something out of the corner of my eye that, that brought my attention to there's, there's a stand of bamboo behind her house and look and took a little flashlight and just shined it. And there was eye shine right there. And the eye shine wouldn't have been a person because it wasn't nowhere near a person's height. And I know, you know, over the years, I know what a coon's eyes looks like. And I know what a possum looks like or anything that, that would be out at night. And I know what a Bigfoot looks like. And I know where their eyes shine is. And it was a Bigfoot standing there. Right. Listening to it. Okay. I showed, I, I said something to, because my wife was with me. And I said, honey, I said, you want to see a Bigfoot? Come over here and look. And I showed her what it looked like. You know, where where was that? And she stood there and she's like, it's just standing there watching us. And that's what it was doing. It was just standing there listening, listening to us, the three of us sit outside at night and talk. That's all it was doing. It was intrigued, I guess. It finally just kind of turned and walked away through the bamboo. It never, never done anything. And that's pretty much the second one that I saw. That's a now. Is that your is that your wife's first first encounter? Yes, her first encounter would be kind of like she overheard she heard one here near our home. That would be the first inkling that she had that there are Bigfoot around our home. But it's like when she when y'all were at uh, when y'all saw that those eyes out in that cane, you, you uh, it kind of sealed it for her, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she didn't sleep too good that night either. She kept she stayed awake. Man, I would just freak out. I I, I would absolutely. I, it would. I don't know what I think. I really don't know what I think. Um, so that was pretty much the end of that one. No no problems with that bigfoot yeah. or anything. No. All right, that's interesting. Well, keep 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 us uh, keep us going here. I know you got more to come. The third one was the very next day. I sent my wife with the lady that had done the interview, sent them to the store. I wanted to find out where these Bigfoot were hanging out at and around her home. So I went to go look for footprints, stuff of that nature, you know, maybe find some hair, find tree breaks or X's and other stuff, markers of Bigfoot. Well, I found them, or at least I found the female. Um, I went back through the bamboo behind her home and there's, there's some pretty dense woods behind, behind the bamboo and was out there walking around. And the only thing I had on me was a, uh, a machete had on my hip, you know, to cut through the bamboo and stuff. Went back down the right side of her home and went through there and went looking through the woods and found some tree bows and, and some, uh, X's and stuff like that that Bigfoot is known to do. Kind of hung a laugh and went over to uh, this really thick area. Didn't see anything, didn't hear nothing. There weren't any birds singing or any chipmunks, you know, making their little squeaks and and running around, and there wasn't no squirrels around. I was like, well, there's something wrong here. So I kind of got the feeling like maybe I shouldn't be there and left was was actually had put my back to this really thick area and started walking out and i heard something behind me and it was a lot of noise and i turned around and looked and there was this female bigfoot on all fours running at me oh man well i didn't i didn't have my typical sidearm that I usually carry with me. And, you know, I don't want to hurt one. I don't want to have to shoot one, but if it means it dying or me dying, I'm going to shoot and then I'm going to get out of Dodge quick as I can. Yep. But she ran up probably within, she kind of bailing out of that brush and, and uh, got probably within 20 yards of me, probably around 60 feet away. And I hollered at her and she stopped. And when she did that, she just kind of stayed on all fours and just looked at me. I started backing up and talking to her and telling her, hey, I ain't, I ain't 
trying to cause no trouble, just leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. We won't have to get into an argument about this. And, and I backed up away from her, and she finally kind of unpinched up and just turned around and walked out on all fours back over into the brush. And I, as soon as I got far enough away, I didn't think that she would hear me run off. I took off running. Man. And uh, got back to the house and didn't say nothing to my wife or the, the other lady. They got back probably 10 minutes after I got back to the house and uh, we carried in groceries and my wife kind of looked at me funny. She said, why are you sweating so much? I said, I can't lie to my wife. That's not a good thing to ever do. <laughs> and uh, finally told her and uh, she just kind of looked at me real funny and said, why do you take chances? And I said, it's just, you know, it's just me, honey. You know that. And we kind of left it at that, and I didn't take any more chances. <laughs> so I, I stay away from, you know, I, I tried not to get into that situation again. I'm, I'm curious, uh, and you may have said, and I may have missed it, but uh, this was a pretty much up-close look at this, this female, right? Mm -hmm. Can you describe for people the appearance that you saw? Can you describe what she looked like? Yeah, she was... I would say she she was down on all fours, and she had long arms. Her back wasn't arched. You know, she kept a straight back. She was hair covered, uh, but you could see, her, you know, her breasts hanging down uh, from what I was looking at. She was hair covered from the top of her head down. She was a sandy blonde collar. You could tell that she was just, Maybe like a 20-something, you know, like a 21 or 22-year-old girl. Okay. And 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 she wasn't big and bulky, you know, like the males that I have seen. She wasn't like that. She was kind of slim and just like I said, just like a 21 or 22-year-old girl that, you know, you would run into out in a you know, out of the grocery store or something of that nature at the library or whatever. Sure. I understand. And, um, but her hips were wide. She may have had a young one already. I don't know. Uh, because I never saw any young ones, you know, back there. But she definitely didn't like the idea of me being around. She just kind of, you know, was intent on getting me out of there. She didn't really want a confrontation, but she didn't want me there either. Right. You know, she had long hair that off the top of her head that went down onto her back a little bit, and it's kind of hung down on the sides off her shoulders. Big, long hands. Uh, the skin on her hands were were not dark. They were kind of like a, a, a light brown. Uh, her face was a light brown. And she had more human-type features on her face because her nose wasn't, uh, it's kind of like you take the end of your nose and just kind of like smash it down a little bit. Yeah. And that's the way her nose looked. Okay. Um, you know, her eyes were probably a couple of inches, maybe three inches between her eyes. I mean, she just looked like a normal young Bigfoot. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, there's not really, you know, there's nothing you can compare them to in the human world because they don't look like it. so her face you know whenever someone talk you get these images in your head of what i mean i have images in my head of what these things could look like in the face and i have a like a you know how the gorilla you know the uh, from his nose down his his mouth and jaws kind of jut out a little bit and they have that large upper lip and and they have long canines and and i doubt you saw her teeth but or did you? Yeah, I saw her teeth. They were just like the typical um, big teeth that you would see on like a horse. No canines. But do you know what I'm talking about? How that gorilla's mouth kind of protrude, protrudes, but it's not like that, is it? No, it's it's. They don't have a big long. Uh, it's not a protruding mouth. It's it, it's flat like a human's. There is a little bit more space between where their nose is and their lips are, but they are kind of like a, a flat set of lips. I mean, they're not big old puppy lips or anything like that. They're just thin, and, you know, she had some wrinkling on her face, uh, but not a lot, not like the big males that I've seen. 
Right. How about her head and neck? Is that is it? Is there no neck, or does you know the shoulders just come up to the head? It, it looks like they're. It looks like almost like if you just it, it, if you would draw like scenery and just put like a little hill on a in the middle of a picture. That's pretty much what their head looks like. It just like it comes up and then goes over and then down the other side and. The, it's because of their muscle structure on the that comes up from their shoulders and it goes up and it connects to some of their head on the back. I understand exactly. I'm sorry to be detailed in some of these questions, and I know you probably get asked this a lot, but people listening are going to want <laughs> they're just going to want to know. Right. All right. Well, um, and you say her skin was brown. I get a lot of reports that their that their skin is gray. You think that's a an age thing? No, because I've seen out of the five Bigfoot that I've seen, I've only seen one that had gray skin. I've seen them have a dark chocolate type skin. I, I think it may not. I don't think it's too much in their age because some of the ones that I've seen that had a dark chocolate. They had long, they had gray hair in their, you know, on their body. Okay. Typically would denote, you know, age, but, you know, I've, I've like I said, I only seen the one in my, in, you know, out of the five that I've seen that had a gray skin. Okay. I got you. All right. Well, I guess we, I don't want to stay on this appearance thing too long. So, and your wife was a little upset with you that you were, but you just had to go look, didn't you? It's kind of in my blood. You know what I mean about that? I mean, that's, that's all I can describe it as. It's in my blood. I have to go look. Right. I understand. I understand that. Well, moving forward, tell us, uh, that's two encounters down. Tell us, uh, tell us how it's progressed since then. Well, it, it, it has kind of reinvigorated me because for a long time I got, had gotten to the point where it was like, Nobody believes anything that, you know, they don't believe anything about Bigfoot. It's, it's all hoax. And I'd heard that for so long. It, you know, it made it to a point where he's like, I'm just ready to give up. You know, trying to let people know about these things and that they can be dangerous. It's, you know, people just look at you like you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. There ain't no such thing. You might want to check yourself into a thing or something. <laughs> I was actually told that once in my life. Oh, my gosh. Seeing those two in North Carolina really reinvigorated me on looking for Bigfoot. And my buddy said, hey, won't you come out to my house? And, you know, they're out here. You can, you know, you can hear them and stuff like that. And we went out and did an investigation at his house. And I've seen two of uh, yeah, two at his house, actually. Both of them were completely different colored, uh, different sized. The first one I seen in his house was probably only eight foot tall, seven to eight foot tall. It actually had a belly on it. And most of them don't have a belly, you know. Right. Uh, uh, like it had been eaten real good, you know. and it, it had, Or maybe it had gotten to that midlife through the midlife crisis or whatever, and it, and it started, you know, getting fat around its midsection and stuff, you know, like we do. Uh, so uh, it was, like I said, between seven, eight foot tall. It was a, uh, a dark chocolate hair. It actually had hair on its face. Well, maybe not on its face, but it had hair that hung down from the right around its chin area and uh, along its jawline. It, its skin color was a dark, dark chocolate. It just kind of, you know, it just kind of walked up on us, looked at us, and left. It just turned around and said, oh, just three people I ain't worried about that. <laughs> just said, heck with the I'm leaving. And then uh, one night we went out to my buddy's house, and we'd sit out there, and, and, and our investigation ain't, ain't like everybody else. You know, we don't try to go out and find them but we don't go out we don't have to go out and find them because they come to watch us we'll cook out on an open fire fix and take steaks and cut them up into little chunks and throw in some potatoes and onions and green peppers and and whatever else we want to cook up in a aluminum foil pan and we'll sit there and eat 
people sit there and talk about, you know, whatever, they seem to come up and investigate us and see what we're doing. We had uh, done that one night. It had, uh, my wife looked at me and said, honey, I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. And it was probably, oh, I'd say one thirty in the morning when we was leaving. Left my buddy's place and went out. I was actually had gotten out and was locking his gate to his driveway up. Was standing there and heard something and had a flashlight with me because everybody has trouble seeing in dark, you know, trying to put a lock together. And looked up and there was a nine footer or better. I would have to say it was over well over nine foot because it was bigger than than the eight footer I saw when I was when I was a uh, young kid. This thing just stood there, turned to look at me, and I shined a flashlight on it, and it just stood there. And finally, it turned back around to cross the road, his driveway, which is a gravel driveway, and it took two steps, and it was over the side of the bank, and I heard it walk off, and I just. Got back in the truck and looked at my wife, and I said, you should have been out there. <laughs> she just, just kind of looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, the big one was up here. <laughs> you just had to rub it in, didn't you? That's the only time I get a rub anything in. The rest <laughs> of the time, she keeps me in. <laughs> I got you. But uh, we came home, and we talked about it all the way home, and, and that was the last one I've seen. I had, We just haven't done any investigations lately, and I haven't been – Going all over the all over the country lately with you know my job and stuff you know just haven't talked to a lot of people and so that's pretty much where I'm at right now I'm starting to get back out there on the road and talking to people and getting more reports of Bigfoot because of the YouTube channel you know people call me with reports now yeah I I uh, I would suspect that you have a better rapport with people who have had encounters since you have yourself. See, I haven't. And so I think mm-hmm. when people uh, send me stories and stuff, I'd like to have that connection with them, but I just don't. And I'm not going to lie and make up a story just to grow. I, this right. is people take this serious people like you who, who have actually seen one. And I think y'all can sniff the fakers out. And so I don't even, I wouldn't even try it. And so as you interview people, you probably have a good back and forth and a just a natural kinship with these people. I'll tell you what drew me to your... I had had several people tell me, you need to listen to what he's doing on his YouTube channel. And if you're 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 in a truck, I don't know what you listen to as you're driving and stuff. You probably have a chance to... I would think YouTube would be hard to listen to while, as a driver because you have to keep skipping through ads and all that crap. What do you normally listen to? Do you listen to the radio or podcasts or what do you what do you normally listen to? Well, I typically listen to uh, Sirius XM. I'm I'm an actual Christian minister. I listen to you know the the Christian channels a lot, and I and, you know I listen to talk radio and stuff like that. But I, typically, I usually listen to the Sirius XM radio, and you know, and I got a CB in my truck. Sometimes guys will get on there and they'll start talking, or they'll holler at you and want to talk, and and I do that too. But my life is rather boring when you're driving the truck. That's that's the only thing I can tell you. <laughs> it's kind of boring. I was kind of using that to make a point because I said in a video back, I don't know, two or three videos ago that, you know, guys that create videos like you and I do, we don't really have time to watch a lot of YouTube. I I know that I've gotten comments from truck drivers saying, oh man, your videos are fun to listen to in the truck and stuff. But I always wonder, Mm -hmm. man, do they just have to sit there and endure those stupid ads or what? What drew me to your channel was first a couple of people had told me about it uh through emails Mm -hmm. or in the comments and you know we don't again we don't have a lot of time to just watch youtube all day but uh, i mean i would if i could it's not that i don't like it i just you know some things you can't do while you're working but i went over and i i wound up and i think i just got through your I think I've listened to your whole library, and it's fascinating to me how you tell these stories because they feel like, you know, my stuff is kind of a production. Even though I'm reading people's real accounts, I'm I'm paying attention to, you know, music and scenery and all that fluffy stuff because I'm trying to do an entertainment channel, basically. 
But the way you tell these stories, it's almost like it is like you have a kinship with the people who have sent them in. And some of those stories you'll follow up on. And there's one in particular where you're talking about, well, they had to kill this Bigfoot. Now, I don't want you to tell the story here because I want people to go listen to it on your channel. But the uh -huh. but my question is, are you through the years and especially lately with your channel, are you seeing a lot of people taking these things on, shooting them and trying to run them off or killing them if they have to? Well, I. Over the years, um, I have seen quite a few people get frustrated with these these creatures, and uh, they'll start shooting them. Problem with that is, if you don't kill the whole clan, and I've seen it happen, or I didn't see it, but I've, I've been told about it. If you don't kill the whole clan, whatever one that you didn't kill, the other ones come and take revenge. I mean, it's like there's, there's a movie that had Patrick Swayze in it. He was a detective in Detroit or something like that. The mob was in on the, the movie. And they killed his younger brother. And at the end of the movie, the whole family comes to Detroit and starts taking on the mob. And they're shooting these guys with bows and, and shotguns and all this stuff. And, and that's basically the way the Bigfoot do it. I mean, if you start a fight with somebody and it's a fair fight and you get in a fist fight here in the state of West Virginia, your family stays out of it. Yeah. But if the other guy does something and does something to harm you or harm someone in your family, basically it's the Hatfields and McCoys is the way I look at it and the way I found that it happened. It's two families come to fight and they're, they're going to do whatever they have. Yeah. That movie was called Next of Kin, Patrick Swayze, and Liam Neeson was his brother. His name was Briar. And I remember that movie really yeah. well because I, I love that name. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to name our last son Briar because I just love that name. I thought, man, that, what an original name. And, but we had a do my, we had a little girl, <laughs> so I couldn't name her Briar. So I know exactly what you're talking about. They have a real – it's a Next of Kin kind of mentality these Bigfoot troops have, isn't it? Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, looking forward, or you say you're you're kind of thinking about getting back out and doing getting boots on the ground and doing a little more of that. I would imagine with all this mess going on with this virus and everybody short on stuff, just thinking logically, you're probably going to pick up more work, aren't you? Um, yeah. I mean, we do a lot of... I changed companies here uh, recently, and uh, we haul nothing but plastic pellets. It, 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 it's fun to me. And uh, we do a lot of going, you know, across up in the northeast and down the southeast, uh, hauling these plastic pellets to places, you know, and make plastic forks or parts for four wheelers or whatever, you know, whatever plastic's got to be made. And, uh, we're picking up a lot of work right now, and, and it's it's been a busy time for us because of this virus. You know, other companies are cutting back on doing things, and uh, because of this virus, and it, it seems like everything that's plastic is just taking a big boom. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna be busy, but I'm still gonna do this on the weekend. Well, I was going to say, so that uh, uh, maybe it won't cut into your plans to get out there. Do you have a specific area that you're going to be investigating, or do you use your contacts and go visit their places? How do, has, that, has this worked out that way for you, people you've met? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's like the lady I did the live interview with in North Carolina, you know, we did an investigation down there and went looking went and found quite a quite a bunch of markers around her home across the road from her house and everything went looking around and and found a bunch of markers of bigfoot I mean, you know like hides and x's and tree bows and tree twists and uh found a footprint but i'm not the type that goes out and casts you know the footprints and stuff like that i just never never think to do that that's something that i should probably do but i just it, i just don't think about it you know i don't think of them that way i just i know they're there 
my thing is, is, you know, I want to get the information out there to people that these things are not all nice. They can be very aggressive. They will kill you if, if they get a chance to. Actually, I get about 60% nice stories. And then the other 40% are either, you know, there's some nefarious intent with the Bigfoot or something else. But speaking on those foot castings, I wonder, you know, I put up a video, I guess yesterday, and the title of it, title of it was Stay Anonymous. Because I've done a lot of thinking about this. And when I first started doing this about a year ago, you know, I told people, I said, I'll put your name in it if you want to or not. And I kind of came to the, and I haven't ever given anybody's full name. I just, I never felt comfortable doing that. And and if other people do, that's fine. I'm not, I, I just, I'm going to do my thing and everybody else is going to do their thing. And I haven't really picked up on what you do and it doesn't matter. But speaking of the cast, I think here's, and I'm curious what you think about it. I'm going to tell you mine and then you tell me yours. I think as far as Bigfoot investigations go, there are people like you, and I know a dozen guys like you who love to go uh, into the woods, namely because they just love being outdoors. And I kind of pick up from you, you're that way. But to go into the woods and enjoy the outdoors with a mission uh, to be looking for something, whether you're squirrel hunting, turkey hunting, like you and I were talking about earlier, or hunting for signs of Bigfoot, or even looking for an encounter, you can do all that stuff, and I, I, the people that do it are the usually the nicest, most friendly, happy people I've ever met. I, I'm just telling you, they're, I've had such good experiences with investigators like yourself, and, and I know you hadn't been able to do a lot lately, but still, deep at heart, you're an investigator. Here's what I'm getting at. I tried to think, you know, Bigfoot really came on the scene in 1967, when Mr. Giblin and Mr. Patterson got that footage, and then it became really, you know, it was out there to the public and people were, and then with the onset of the internet, it became very popular, you know, with these, with our, you know, little YouTube channels and the websites and all that stuff. But really, really the, the idea of Bigfoot has really not advanced much since 1967, because it's still considered a cryptid a mythical creature or an undiscovered species and thousands of tracks have been cast thousands of tree structures have been you know photographed on and on and on all those tree twists you know wood knock recordings and even videos of people who say this is a bigfoot but the calls i'm just using that word because i can't think of another one has not really moved much since uh, Gimlin and Patterson got that got that video. Bigfoot is still a huge mystery, and so I kind of understand why. You know, why would you stop and 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 cast a track? It's like a. I'm not saying it's a waste of time, but if it was me, I would feel like well, I'm not going to waste my time doing that. I mean, there's a bunch of casts already out there. It's not going to advance the cause, which takes us to people. And I, I'm asking you this because you ha, you have you and I have similar channels. In other words, we tell people stories. I don't think that a, someone attaching their name to a story advances the cause of, and again, cause is probably the wrong word, but advances the theory or cause of Bigfoot one bit. I think what it does. On the other hand, I think it could be. See, these people never know. Who's going to stumble on one of these? If you give your full name, man, it could cause all kind of trouble in your life. And I discour I've gotten to where I've discouraged people from doing that. If you want to tell your first name, that's fine. So you can show your buddies, hey, see, he's telling my story. Or, or, or the guy that had the encounter with him, here's our story, you know. And so they can identify it with their friends and say, hey, listen to this. But just to put it out there to the world, in my opinion, is I think people should really think about that. I'm not saying they shouldn't do it. So everybody listening, I'm not saying they should not do it. I'm just saying you need to think about it real hard before you put your full name out there. And I'm wondering what your feeling is on that. Do you have any or can you expound on that? Yeah, just like on my channel. 
there's there's people that I get the person's full name, but here's the thing. Back when I was doing all the investigations and when I was able able to go out at any time at night or you know or or chase down a story from somebody, I had you know I got their names and you know these other people that would before I before I started YouTube, you would associate the person's name with the the story about the Bigfoot, about their encounter with the Bigfoot. And if you put that name out there, I'd actually seen a guy lose his job and his home because of it. And this was something that he'd seen a Bigfoot back when he was a kid out squirrel hunting one day, and, and he got a hold of me, and I, I put his name with the story and you know, kind of associated it with other people that, that I knew had seen Bigfoot. And I guess that name kind of got, his name got back to someone that he worked for. And they fired him because of it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Called him right in the office and said, you know, I heard that you saw this mythical creature and I can't have you associated with that. And said, so I've I've got to let you go. And he lost a real good paying job. And because of losing his job, he lost his home. And that put him and his wife and a and couple of kids out on the street. And he had it tough for, for three or four years. And, uh, you know, he said, I wish that I would never have told you. You know, because I check on people that give me a story. You know, I get their phone numbers. I call them and, you know, see how they're doing and see if the Bigfoot are still coming around their home and stuff like that. You know, I, I care about these people. Because, like you said earlier, you probably get sixty percent or forty, you know, of good stories. Me, on the other hand, I get probably eighty-five percent bad stories about Bigfoot and fifteen good. Right. But the thing of it is, is you know, I, I care about these people and and their well-being, and that's why I never give a person's name. I don't care if they tell me to put their full name or their first name out there. No, I'm not doing it. Because I've seen the consequences of it firsthand. I, I'm so glad you said that because, and I, and again, I don't think you have a cause or I have a cause, but I don't ever want to steer anyone wrong so that I get a, am able to create a good video and make a little change. It's not right. It's just not right to do that. And it's different than, you know, there are other cases where you don't want to, you don't want to lose your identity. You're a pastor and you know that if a man follows Christ, he does not in any case want to deny Christ. It, it doesn't it doesn't negate the gospel if you do. If you do deny Christ, Jesus already paid for every sin you're ever going to make. He did it with Peter. But you want to display a posture of something that you love and care about. You don't want to let those things go, like your faith or your family or your country. But Bigfoot's not worth it. It's just not worth all the upheaval in your life that could be that could come down the pike. And so uh, I'll put that video out. A guy had written a story about a guy in, in the UK and how he had been harassed all his life, and he finally had to leave the town. He, it was so bad he had to leave the town. And this wasn't even a Bigfoot thing. It was a kind of a UFO story. So I'm so glad to, to hear you say that. And I don't blame any other channels for asking people to give their names. If that's the way they want to run their channel, that's their business, and I'm not going to get in their business. But I just want to tell people before you do, just think it through real hard. And, and it sounds like you agree with me. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, like I said, I've seen, and, and this guy that I was telling you about, you know, he didn't know me from Adam or Eve. He, you know, he, he confided in me with his story. And all I did was tell two other guys. They hunted for Bigfoot. Uh, in fact, one of those guys was my mentor that, that taught me about, you know, what Bigfoot does and other things and, and showed me a lot of stuff that Bigfoot does. He never told nobody, but the other guy did. Right. And it got back around and the other guy wasn't even in the same town or what wasn't even in the same part of the state, but he got back around to the guy's boss and he lost his job and lost his home and, it almost cost him his marriage, 
and you know, there'd have been a divorce, and you know, he, you know, he may have lost his kids in the process of it. People have asked me, well, you know, who is this person that you're talking about? You don't get their name, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mean to be mean, no, but they have confidence in me keeping their name and their career safe and their family safe because what if a guy goes out fishing with his buddies one night and him and his buddies see this Bigfoot and he doesn't go home and tell his wife about it. Well, he, you know, six months or eight months down the road and he tells me about the story or he calls me, you know, he finds my channel on YouTube or, or he calls you or anybody else that does this on YouTube. And he calls them and says, you know, Hey, um, this is what happened to me and my buddies. Well, these guys are out fishing. They're not drinking, you know, they're not, not doing anything wrong, but you know, somebody puts their name out there and all of a sudden they're, you know, this gets back to their wife and the wife's like, there's no such thing as Bigfoot. You lied to me. You, and this is going to cause a big argument and it might drive a wedge in the family, you know, between them, you know, I've got to look at that. You know, I've got that, something like that happens. I've, I've got it on my mind and it's on my heart. I wouldn't want somebody putting my name out there. You know, if it's me, that's fine. I'll put my name out. But if people don't, don't want their name out there and I did it anyway because, you know, like I said, I, I get their first and last name, get their telephone number. It's That's a lot of identifying information for someone. It gets back to their wife and their wife doesn't believe them, tells them a big rift in the family, they get divorced. You know, the guy's got to, you know, he, he doesn't have his kids, doesn't have the woman that he fell in love with anymore because she didn't believe him. That would weigh heavily on me. On me. You have a conscience, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I have, I have a, a lot of concern for other people, and I guess you know if that's conscience, you know that's that's what it is. Well, listen, we're we're a little bit over an hour now, so let's. Uh, and I always ask everybody. Uh, first, let me say I just got a notification from your YouTube channel that your video. Canaan Valley Bigfoot or Messy Boogers just got uploaded. So after y'all listen to this, go go to Old Bear's Den of Bigfoot channel and watch his latest video and check out all his videos. But what I was going to say is I kind of give everybody a, uh, I ask you, you have any parting words or anybody on this topic uh, before, we, before we sign off? Uh, the only thing that I would like to say is Bigfoot is a creature that we don't know what exactly they are. But they live out in the wild. They live out in the woods, you know, deserts, places that most people don't go. The best thing I can tell you is, is have your head on a swivel. Uh, watch your back. Be very careful of these creatures. If you come up on them, don't give them a reason to attack you. You don't stand a chance. Just be safe out there, people. I mean, I'd love to hear your story about seeing a Bigfoot. I don't want to hear somebody else's story that my buddy got killed by a big bird. Yeah, and this is coming from a guy who's seen aggressive behavior and has five encounters of his own. He's seen how big these things are. He's seen how powerful and fast they are, and he's got a little idea of their demeanor. So take his word for it, investigators. You know, be careful. Uh, I would listen to what the man said. Well, listen, I appreciate you so much i know it took how long we've been trying to put this together for a month and a half <laughs> i'd get sick and then you'd get sick and then my wife got sick and uh finally today i just called him and i said how about right now and he goes let's do it so we just did it thank you so much for doing this with me it's a huge i consider it a huge favor to me and before we go we talked about your discord link what is does it have a name that people can search on Discord? It's just old bears den of Bigfoot. Okay. Um if you go to my channel, there's actually a link for the Discord. It'll download the app and everything for you. I'm gonna go to your channel and copy that link and put it in the description below of this video. And I'm also gonna link your YouTube channel first, your Discord channel second, and 
I think that should get everybody all the information they need to get over. And I and I highly recommend you go listen to his stories because they are great. They're great. And I I'm uh I, it's uh, when when I get to listening, it's like I can't stop. I can't turn it off. I have to. And then it's hard not to go to the next video if I'm busy, but he's telling great stories, true stories, good stories that he's getting from drivers and from people that he knows through his discord channel and friends and, you know, buddies he's come up hunting with and, and all those kind of things. So y'all go check them out one more time. Thank you again for coming on and, uh, guys, thanks for listening this far and I appreciate you. And we will see you on the next video. Thanks. Thanks.